Good afternoon. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I am not Khan Siddiqui. He's actually sitting in the audience, waving to everyone. Uh, he's under the weather and has lost his voice. I'm Eddie Knopp. I'm a diagnostic neuroradiologist and the senior medical director here at Hyperfine. And this afternoon, we're going to discuss defining the future of life-saving diagnosis at the bedside. How can we improve the accessibility of stat magnetic resonance imaging? And we think that the Hyperfine swoop scanner is the solution to enable you to do that. So right now, as you know, there are a wide variety of challenges in conventional MRI imaging. Clearly high cost, complex sighting requirements, scheduling can lead to lengthy delays in overall patient care and management, along with the consumption of valuable patient resources. Well, what do I mean by that? If you have a patient in an ICU, that patient just can't waltz on down to the MR suite and get scanned. You're taking, if they're ventilated, you're gonna have respiratory therapists, you're gonna have ICU nurses and other support staff that have to accompany that patient down to the MRI facility. While that's happening, there's always the risk that something's gonna happen. Get stuck in an elevator, the ET tube gets plugged out, one of the infusion pumps gets turned off, or worse yet, gets bolused and turned on. You have to always maintain these connections to life support. So is there another possible solution that can mitigate all of these potential problems and solve the answers? And we think that the Hyperfine portable swoop scanner is that solution. So we are a portable point of care device that can be brought to the patient wherever that environment is. Take the scanner, wheel it in, it drives like a wheelchair, plug it into a standard 15 amp outlet, much power as a coffee maker, microwave oven. Two minutes later, you're ready to scan. The system itself is FDA cleared from 2020. There are proprietary noise cancellation systems associated with the scanner itself to enable it to scan and exist in whatever environment you want to use, whether it's an ICU, whether it's an ER, whether it's an operating room. It's low field, 64 millitesla. That's 0.064 tesla. There's no projectile effect. You don't have to worry about coming into the room with an oxygen tank, God forbid, like recently happened in Korea, and have it launched into the patient's head. As I mentioned, the system is FDA cleared for imaging the brain in all patient ages. That was in 2020. It's reimbursable under standard CPT code 70551, brain MRI without contrast. In addition, and we're very excited about this, artificial intelligence and deep learning, now approved by the FDA and can be used clinically, enhances our image quality. It brings our image quality to the level and the realm of high field scanners without any scan time penalty. We've chosen to improve the image quality at this point in time. And primary use cases, acute mental status change, hydrocephalus, post-operative change, and just think about where you want to do this. The ICU, the emergency room, the operating room, some pediatric clinic with patients with ventricular catheters and the like. A wide variety of clinical use cases, as you would imagine, in these environments. Clearly, acute mental status change. It's three in the morning and something's going on with that patient. You want to know what's happening. Is there a intraparenchymal hemorrhage? Is there a large extra axial collection? Or you can wheel the scanner right up to that patient and make that diagnosis in a timely fashion without, in the middle of the night, having to take that patient down to a conventional scanning system. So there are benefits for all parties that are involved in that patient's care. First and foremost, the patient. Right? It's going to be safer, it's going to be easier to transport. You're going to get a diagnosis in a more rapid time frame. You don't have to wait for the patient to be transported. For the physician, the physician can get the diagnosis and be assured that's going to be done more timely and safer for their patient. The staff, well, you talk to ICU nurses. The one thing they hate is the dreaded trip down to MR. It's like the trip to God knows where. They never know what's going to happen. They're unsecure. It's an unfamiliar environment. Here, the MRI is brought to that patient in their scanning room in an environment where that nurse is used to and accustomed. And at the same time, you're not changing your nursing staff. You're not pulling a nurse. If your staffing coverage is one nurse to three patients and you're taking one away, well, that staffing is one nurse to five patients maybe. You're not changing that dynamic in the ICU. And again, the response and the benefits to the institution itself better care for the patient, reduce time to a diagnosis, and maybe an improvement in overall length of stay. 
right? What does it take to scan a patient from an ICU in a main MR facility? You're stopping scanning for maybe an hour and a half or two hours. But if you don't have to do that, you can increase your throughput and scan those patients as well. And what we've seen through the use of technological advancements, artificial intelligence most recently with deep learning, a dramatic and significant improvement in image quality from when the company first started back in 2015 to currently now, November 2021. I think you can see it in these examples. The scanner is capable of non-contrast brain MRI, T1, T2, and flare, all with deep learning artificial intelligence applied, as well as diffusion weighted imaging with a B value of 900, a B0, and a calculated ADC map. In addition, there is additional deep learning capabilities that are utilized in order to obtain volumetric assessments in certain clinical conditions, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So we feel that Hyperfine is driving portable MR, right? There's nobody else out there in the world that has this capability and is doing this, and we're using artificial intelligence to drive that, and artificial intelligence in two ways. Clearly, we have this FDA cleared about almost a year ago, Brain Insight, which is capable of providing analysis of the images in the cloud to do brain volumetrics, ventricular size volumetrics, and calculation of midline shift. In addition, most recently, approved by the FDA last week, is artificial intelligence deep learning to advance image reconstruction. And we'll talk about that in a minute, to improve image quality and take those images, as I mentioned, into the realm of high field. So we can see here some clinical examples of what we call our Brain Insight clearance almost a year ago in January 2021, where ventricular volume is segmented and measured. If you want to follow someone, hydrocephalus or not, you can get a quantitative assessment of the change in ventricular size. Likewise, if there's mass lesions, a quantitative assessment of the degree of midline shift and an overall assessment of the overall volume of the brain itself as it's automatically segmented out. All done automatically, again, from the standard scanner data processed in the cloud. In addition, and most exciting and most recently, is the use of our deep learning image reconstruction techniques. It's basically a three-part technique where there are artificial neural networks that are trained with inputs from noisy case-based data. This is data before it gets into the image realm, along with less noisy images that are generated via stimulation. This is designed then using an advanced gridding MR technique to break this data down into various smaller grids to obviate the potential for artifact and error, and then processed in case space, the image is then generated as a, I guess, a substitute for a fast Fourier transform, and then on the image realm of the data, it's denoised for further image improvement. And we can kind of see that here with case space data that's processed multiple times, and the output is a high resolution image, be it T1, T2, or flare, that's processed by these neural, convolutional neural networks that correct error and don't introduce error. And this has been validated and, again, approved by the FDA. So our overall reconstruction pipeline for this new technology is the data is acquired, the case space is pre-processed, the advanced gridding technique is utilized to, to obtain an image as opposed to the fast Fourier transform, and then upon the image being obtained, the image is denoised to get us our ultimate image quality. And I think you can see clearly here what a routine T2 weighted image looked like back in January and what it looks like now in September, an improvement in image quality. And this, I got to admit, this is in the realm of high field scan. And that's where we are right now with this technique. So I think we can say that our portable MR addresses the challenges of traditional MR, not by taking the patient to the MR, but let's flip it and bring the MR to the patient itself so we can get timely results to the clinician, safer, more efficacious exams, both through the use of advanced technical advancements on the scanner itself, and more recently and more importantly, the use of artificial intelligence and deep learning to improve that image quality and take it where it needs to go. So thank you very much. We are in the North Hall, booth 8110. We have two scanners that are actually scanning patients. If you want to get scanned, you're welcome to lie down for five minutes. We can get a quick T2 look of your brain. I'll take a look at it if you like. I am a diagnostic neuroradiologist and get some more insight into our technique. If anybody has any questions, I'd be more than happy to take them now. Thank you.